anyway. Uh, so they, when they're trying to imagine, when they're trying to answer that question to produce empathy of, if I were that person, if I were in that person's shoes, how would, in that situation, how would I feel? They're drawing on this just enormous amount of data that they have collected over the years in very carefully and thoroughly examining their own subjective experience. And it's with the way the empathy works with FI is it is to work from the personal outward into the objective world um, and to find in, in oneself what is universal to the human experience. Um, and because of that orientation, oh, there's more to say about this too, but because of that orientation, um, I mean, I think that's a key thing to why it is um, that so many of the, the greatest writers that the world has ever known are INFPs. They are ridiculously overrepresented in literature. It's, it's, it's ridiculous when you look at, uh, anyway, um, and also just in the arts, period, but um, in the literary world, for sure, for sure, for sure. And they're very often are very much more articulate in writing and very articulate in writing than in speaking. But again, loads of exceptions. All right, back to this, uh, what I was saying. All right, so it's that, that title that Aurora has for album, very, very romantic. Um, INFPs have a lot of demons, maybe not more than others, but and are very aware of that. They're very aware of that fact. Um, you can see that in the, what Aurora says right before she performs her song, Warrior. Uh, right before when she says something about um, what the song is about being, um, you know, she says, she, she says disappointed and then, but you know, she doesn't want to say that. You can see she doesn't want to say that. Uh, fighting against the night, as her lyric goes in that song. Um, she says, you know, kind of disappointed, you know, like looking out at the world and seeing so many, and she said, as you get older, you just learn more and more about the dark sides of life. INFP, no, INFPs uh, think constantly. They, they can't help but be aware all the time of the darker sides of life, uh, the darker sides of human motivations and, um, and the ills that, that humans do. They're also very, and they're also, because their own study subject, they're, they're sort of a big reference point for so many of their evaluations of objective world stuff, have to do with study of the self. This is also why they're so, so often they're great novelists. The novel as an art form is uh, one that very well explores sub a subjective state of a character. What's going on inside the mind, you know, un under the, the lid of a particular person. And INFP, you know, it's no accident that there's so many uh, great no novelists who are INFPs. So, yes, so they're, I mean, they think about that. They think about what the demons are and they're aware of what theirs are. They, and they, and furthermore, they feel a lot about them. So, um, they're very aware of that fact uh, with their unparalleled idealism and the heavy perfectionism that goes with it when it comes to their work and to being good enough people in their own highly critical eyes. There's a faintly tragic air around many an INFP. Again, not all, I'm not at all, I'm, in fact, I'm not even saying most, I'm just saying that, um, you know, I just don't think this should be denied. Uh, the world is very hard for them as, more than any other type in my estimation, they are not really of it, this world. And they could not serve the societal functions they are meant to temperamentally if they were. I'm going to say a whole lot more about that in upcoming videos. Additionally, the world is very hard on them, as we abundantly see, even in the microcosm that is the MBTI nerd world. So never even mind all the slagging and the complaining and the bitching and the um, making fun of and ridiculing and putting down of INFPs um, that, you know, quite casually happens uh, out there in the communities discussing uh, MBTI type. But consider that the official instruction to certified MBTI practitioners is that if people are scoring um, in the assessment, uh, the official assessment, if they're scoring near the, you know, the middle, sorry, the, um, I can't call it the midline, there is no midline in the, the um, MBTI, but if they're, they're scoring sort of, their scores are not very high 
in a, in a preference. They're very, very close within a few points uh, to the end of the spectrum that, that separates you know, one from another in terms of the preference scales. Um, an instruction to the practitioner is to tend toward, like to kind of correct for and kind of assume that you know, if they're very near the edge, to you know, sort sort of explore with the uh, respondent um, to kind of think, hmm, they probably like if they say they're in the middle or their scores indicate being very very close to what the middle would be, uh, then it, you know, tend to assume it's you know more introverted than extroverted. Tend to assume that probably their their true the true pattern of their preferences will be more on the intuitive gathering. Uh, sorry, information gathering preference side. Uh, assume that it, they're probably more F, they're probably Fs, not Ts, they're, and then assume that they're probably Ps, not Js. Um, I think that's pretty telling about, <laughs> I, think it, I, think it, I think that is, you know, I think that's related to a lot of things. Um, one of the things I think that's related though to is that, you know, when in doubt, um, assume that the person is sort of trying to escape being you know, an introvert over an extrovert. They're trying to escape being an, an, you know, an N over an S. They're trying to escape being an F over a T. They're trying to escape being a, um, a P uh, rather than a J. I think that says a whole, that's a real comment on um, what the societal values are. So, and I don't think there's a, I, I mean, I bring it if you want to, but I, I just don't, I just don't see why there's an, I, I, it's hard for me to imagine that anybody disputing um, that the things that are associated with uh, INFP altogether, anyway, I'll get into this in a second, are, uh, are not the privileged ones. They're not. I think they're, fan you know, they're fantastic, and I'm not alone in that, obviously, but, uh, you know, the, for social currency and getting pats on the head and proved of by society in general and being highly valued and being high status on the basis of the type, um, INFP doesn't get nearly as much respect as it deserves, generally speaking. All right, now back to this letter. So I said there's a faintly tragic error on many an INFP, uh, blah, 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 sorry. Right, the world is very hard on them. I, and then I say no other type represents the full panoply of ruthlessly denigrated personal qualities and cultural phenomena associated with the feminine, capital, archetype I'm talking about, like INFP. Um, and I say, if you do a survey, even the most casual of surveys, uh, of any appreciable number of great artists, musicians, and writers who've gone to an early grave thanks to mental illness or addiction, INFPs are all over the goddamn place, like way out of proportion to their two to three percent of the general population. Now. I'm not going to go further. Again, I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm not going to um, run from that. You know, uh, I see that. I see that a lot of INFPs have a lot. They have a lot to manage, and it's really difficult to manage that kind of load. And I'm going to talk about what kind of a load that is for people who can't relate to it very easily. Um, I think it's important to talk about, and. Uh, you know, and I think that's a very important part of remedying the unfair treatment and evaluation of INFPs is that people should, people should understand what it is they're criticizing and the reasons behind what they're criticizing, the phenomena that they are criticizing, they should know a lot more about it because I think if they looked at it in a different light and in a more informed light, in a more legitimate light, um, then their opinion might be quite different. Alrighty, anyways. Moving on, so back to Aurora and this article. When asked about her songwriting process, Aurora talks about not being able to, <laughs> this is at the end of the interview, not being able to carry a piano around in her traveling. Um, she does a lot of her composing on piano and guitar, apparently, and when she's at home. And she jokes that she already has all her books to carry. And I said, how many SPs tour the world, but just have, in 2016, but just have to have back-breaking stacks of books with them wherever they go. Question mark, question mark. Now, again, this is like, ah, you know, this is a bit stereotyping here. So th again, this would never be something to go on exclusively at all, at all, at all. However, I do think it's the case that, you know, I'm sure there are plenty of SP bookworms out there, but 
are there more INFP bookworms to SP ones? Oh yeah. Most of the, again, I've known a lot, a lot, a lot of INFPs. Most INFPs love to read. They've always loved to read. That is if they could, you know, they didn't have learning disabilities or some other kind of cognitive difficulties doing so. They tend to love to read from an early age and they, they're voracious readers. They get so much out of it. And um, that's much more typical. So I'm like, yeah, just put that in the pile for a maybe pile for Aurora in terms of differentiating her from ISFP. All right, another pull quote from that article. Uh, but when usually when I'm at home, I have a p yeah, I have a piano or a guitar. I'll start writing a melody, and then the words will come like little bees into a beehive, making honey. So it depends on what kind of tool I have in front of me. Now I just I said I'd be very hard pressed to come up with a more INFP typical phrase than that one. Really. So she starts, you know, the process, she starts, again, not that only an INFP could say this, but it's just, all right, start writing a melody and then the words will come. So again, this, it's sort of working on this very, very intuitive, like this very feeling-based process. It's not, it's not a very dry, analytical, um, you know, obsessed with formalism basis for making artwork. It's, um, you know, I sit down I, and I just start to do something rather, uh, you know, I feel, feel my way through it, so to speak. I start writing the, the melody and I try, you know, she trusts that the words will come, they'll come to her. Her imagination will provide them, her intuition will provide them. Like little bees into a beehive making honey. So here we have again, like just liberal, liberal, liberal use of, of uh, simile going on with her and her quote. She seems to be doing it all day long. And again, do censors do that? No. No, they don't. I mean, they do sometimes. But do they do it all the time? No. Not like, uh, not like N's do. Not like NF's do. Most NF's, I should say. Most, most, most. Um, yeah, so I say once again, as with the Kate Bush, you know, is she an ISFP or an INFP? I just, I can't, ima I just don't know how there can be any question here as to whether she's a censor or an intuitive um, FP. Now moving along to, to um, more in the letter, let's see. Now you know what, I'm going to break it up here. This, uh, this would be a good place to break and I'll continue after that.